Ukraine TV channel presents. Who are you? Episode 1 No, no interviews, especially about my patients. Yes, have a nice day. Goodbye. A beautiful psychiatrist that drove three patients to suicide. A psychotherapist, Smartises. Hello? Yes, I'll be there in in 15 minutes. Who's the first one? Good morning, Inga. It's good I've reached you. I wanted to tell you there is no need to hurry. What do you mean? Overchenko cancelled. He has an emergency at work. Fine. So, who's next? Erwin and his wife were the next ones. Were? They're not coming either. Great. Do we have anybody left for today? Nobody. Inga, looks like we have a day off today. May I go home? Yes, of course. You may. Thank you, Inga. I guess you need to look for a new job, girl. Yup. Inga, aren't you going to work today? Morning, Auntie Klava. Morning? Oh, excuse me. Yes, hello, Victor. Inga, did you recognize me? It's Samashko speaking. Yes, of course I did. If you want to cancel the appointment, then I... We need to meet. It's urgent. Do you know my restaurant? Of course I do. Everybody knows it. See you soon then. On my way. Thanks. Have a nice day. Psychiatrist. I'm a psychotherapist. And as a psychotherapist, I suggest you speak more with your son. It will do you good. Hello? Are you Inga? Yes. Victor is waiting for you. Thanks. Victor? Victor? Wait, no way. Hello, Captain Mischenko. Morning, sir. Directorate General of the Police. What do we have here? Well, a guy fell down. The guards say it's their boss. From the sky? From the balcony.
Inga. It's fine, princess. I'm here for you. Did you study at Princeton and got your degree in the US to pick the local psycho's brains? Uncle Andre. Don't you? Uncle, me. One year later, it was stupid of me to think that a year stateside would help you. Uncle Andre, but. Tell me, why did you come back? You could easily get a job at the FBI with your degree in. What is it? Profiling. What are your prospects with the local police? You're silent. That's right, because you know there's nothing for you here. I want to be useful here and now. I'm asking you to hire me as a consultant for two months. If it won't work, I'll quit. You know me. I know you well, my dear. You're stubborn as an ox. I wonder who you got it from. No, I'm totally against it. Get some rest in the meantime. I'll come when I am free. Okay, bye. Good afternoon, sir. And a good one to you, Oleg. There was a decision to reinforce your unit, Major. Your detectives are good. But a professional psychologist can come in handy. Meet your new colleague. This is Inga Stefan, a criminal profiler straight from the FBI Academy. Really? You're freelance consultant for three months. And this is Major Olgmasenko, head of the Homicide Desk, well, the Grave Crimes Unit. I hope you'll get along. Nice to meet you. We've met. Really? Yes, Captain Me. No, Major. Major, right. He investigated the death of my last patient, Victor Samashko. He had problems with business, right? Yes. Well, it's good that you know each other. Morning. Morning. Morning, Major General, sir. I can see you're working hard. Head of the unit, introduce your new employee to our colleagues. Then, come to my office. Yes, sir. I need to see your boss. Get it. Miss, Major General doesn't receive visitors. What do you want from him? I'm not a visitor. I'm Mara Dest. Got it. I need to see your general at once. Stop. Let me in. Are you really from the FBI? Wow, that's some luck. Why did they do this to you? Did you get in a serious mess to deserve such an exile? It's much simpler. I graduated and came back home. Tell me, a profiler, is it something like a fortune teller? Well, you look at a person and can tell their past, present, and future. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> for example, you often got detentions at school for the lack of discipline. You were a mediocre student. Recently, you had psychological trauma connected with a serious risk, and you haven't recovered from it yet. There are still aftershocks. Inga. Yeah? Can I have a minute with you? Sure. Where can I get coffee here? What did you want? I'm begging you. Hello. Hello. The head of the directorate is at the ministry. I'm Major Miskenko, a head of the desk. Let's go to my office. Please come in. Make yourself comfortable. Have a seat. Thanks. So, what can our venerable police do for our star? By the way, since your cover is blown, you can take the sunglasses off. Thanks. But I feel better this way. I require protection. Is somebody threatening you? Yes, I mean, no. But I am being stalked. 
A car has been following me for the last four days. Are you sure it's the same car? Of course I'm sure. I'm not an idiot. It's a blue Chevrolet. And it follows me everywhere. To the restaurant. It comes even to the set. It was there today, too. Well, you're a famous actress who's got a lot of fans. Maybe it's one of them. No, no. My fans don't behave like this. They either want a selfie or simply come up to me. But this one never gets out of the car. And I'm scared. You probably can't describe the driver or tell me the plate number. Of course not. I have better things to do. I came to the police for you to provide me security. You see, we need more serious reasons for that. There are hundreds of cars like this in the city, and you might see 20 of them in a week. Do you think I'm making this up? I wonder. What do I have to do for you to believe me? Do I need to get attacked? Or killed? What kind of people are you bastards? Are you even human? Don't you see how scared I am? Mara. Yes? Please take the sunglasses off. I think our unit needs a specialist like her. If we take the global forensic science. Lieutenant, don't tell us about global forensic science. Better admit that you like her. She's pretty. I totally agree with you on that. Legs for days. Captain, our new employee's appearance won't influence my attitude towards her. Yeah, right. Stephanie, what do you think? What can you say about this gift out of the blue? I think this is bullshit. All these psychological profiles and behavior patterns. Why did the general bring this chick here himself? Miss Dest, calm down. We'll check it out. Did you tell anyone about it? Guards at the set, your friends. Hi. Hello. Excuse me, what's going on? Did you forget you're needed on set? I'm Igor Kovetsky, Mara Dest's agent. Good. Miss Dest was just telling us about a stalker. I see. Let's go to the set. Just a second, Mr. Kavesky. Wait in the car. Did she really tell you that someone was following her? Mara has been going through a rough time lately. Problems at the set. That's why she is so wound up. Do you think she made all of this up? Definitely. I'm with her nearly all the time. Do you think I wouldn't notice? Why would she make all this up? I don't know. Maybe she wants attention. Okay. Thanks. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye. What was that about? I mean her sunglasses. Did you hypnotize her? No, I just chose the right moment. Why? It's nothing. You know what I mean. Major. Let's skip the foreplay, okay? Sure. Sure. What are you going to do? About what? Mara Dest. Oh, Mara Dest. Nothing. What do you mean nothing? What if she's really being followed, not by a fan but by a dangerous stalker? Her agent would have raised hell long before. She's a drama queen, don't you see? But she really is scared. Did you notice the way she talks? Her hands, her eyes. She takes both sedatives and adds. That's what I'm talking about. She needs treatment, not bodyguards. That's it. You know, a year ago I formed a correct opinion about you. You don't care about people, about the victims. You choose the easy way out. Oh yeah. And you don't have good cop instincts. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You wouldn't listen to me then and rode it off as a suicide. Because it was easier, simpler. A woman is in danger, and you tell her off. But this time I'll interfere. I won't just let it slide. Is that clear? Ha. Huh. Do whatever you want. You won't be here for long anyway. Have fun while you can. We'll see. No. He couldn't have killed himself. Why did he ask me to meet him then?
for me to find his body. Maybe he was courting you and felt rejected. He decided to be a little dramatic, invited you, and overdid it a bit. He was not a depressed teenager. He was a grown, mature man without any suicidal dispositions. I'm saying this as his doctor. Inga. This is your fourth dead patient without any dispositions. Do you suspect me? No. Why would I? You have no motive. Let's stop here. Do you still think it was a suicide? Yes. I see. Please. You know, I... I always thought that good cops had intuition. But not you. It happens. It sure does. Major, I was looking for you. I have some news about our miss at BI. She turned out to be Strizik's wife's niece. You're kidding. Looks like we've got a warden, not a consultant. So be careful what you say around her. Got it. Thanks for the warning. Hi. You should be careful, too, and get this mess sorted out. I will tell you dick ever again. Hi. Hi. Corvallo. Did you tell her everything? Don't you know your aunt? She'd make a great interrogator. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let's skip the drama part and get down to the facts. Yes, I finished my profiling course. Yes, at the FBI. And yes, I'm back to work as a profiler. So please, let's not waste our time fighting. I won't change my mind. Fine. Have a seat, daughter. We can talk over dinner. Of course. I understand everything. Girl has an American education, American job. Who cares if she hasn't seen her parents for years? And oh, why don't overreact? Okay. I'm back. Everything's fine. It's okay. What's fine? Huh? Lena, she didn't come here because she missed us. She came here to risk her life catching the maniacs. What would your Jerry say? He'd say... Jerry died two years ago. But if you want to talk about it, fine. Jerry was a smart man, and he'd understand me. Too bad you can't. Okay, it was nice to see you guys. I'll call you, okay. Inga, wait, eat something at least. Oh, by the way, using Jerry's name to manipulate me was low. Hello, family. And there's the surprise. Yeah, I guess she brought this surprise from the States when she flew in yesterday. Meet my Jerry. Hi. This is my dad. Hello. Yevgen. Nice to meet you. I'm Jerry. This is my uncle, Andre. Hi. Hello. This is my mom, Elena. And this is my Aunt Alia. Jerry. Nice to meet you. Well, hello? Jerry and me are getting married. Why so suddenly? Let me explain. Well, Inga and I have been together for a long time. We just kept it a secret. Why so? Are you a deadbeat dad? Or maybe an ex-con? I told you about Aunt Alia. Let's skip the interrogations and scandals. Let's just have a good family time. Dad, is the kebab done? Five minutes? 
I'll go help them. Okay. How are you? Set the timer. Do you have kebabs in the States, huh? You are an American, right? That's right, General, sir. We don't have actual kebabs. We have barbecue. I guess it's pretty much the same. You could have told us. Mom, you'd start worrying, preparing and stuff. We decided to make it a surprise, and it turned out great. Oh, yeah. You've became a shrink to our misfortune. Okay, let's go, or the ladies will eat your bride alive. As you can see, General Strizik isn't the scariest member of our family. Come on. Well, spread the love, as they say. So, when are you planning to get married? Sometime in October, when I am done with my business here. Jerry, what kind of business do you have here? I hope you're a diplomat. No, I am a historian. A historian? Yes. I am writing a book about the Second World War, and I really to visit the catacombs, yeah? It really was an important part of the war. The resistance movement. Jerry's grandpa was a resistance fighter. Jerry teaches history in Princeton. We met there, actually. Jerry also writes great history books, right? I will definitely give you my book. With an autograph. With an autograph. Inga, wait. Inga, don't be mad at us, okay? We're just very worried about you after Jerry's death and those suicides. Mom, I understand. And Alia didn't lose her grip. She's like a pit bull. What's this? Oh, this is a present, I guess. It was delivered a week ago on your birthday. Who is it from? I thought you knew. The courier said it didn't have a return address. Weird. Only you folks knew I'd be home for my birthday. Okay, I'll deal with it. Thanks, mommy. I really have to go. I'm starting tomorrow, and I haven't unpacked yet. Mara Dest, Fate and Destiny. A candid interview with a new star. Rocket Science. Another scandal with Mara Dest. Star fever or alcohol abuse. Mara Dest sabotages the shoot again. The director is furious. No wonder. That was quick. That was quick. Or how would our miss it be, I put it. No, she was really scared. Good morning. Good morning. You don't need to, Inga. Go ahead. Major General isn't here yet. You can wait for him at the reception. I am a consultant for the Grave Crimes Unit. Is Mischenko in? Mischenko and his guys went to a murder scene an hour ago. A murder, huh? Give me the address.
Hi, any comments on Mara Death's death? Is it a murder or a suicide? Well, you make a statement. Premiere, Mara Death's new comedy, Inga. Inga Stefan. Please tell us what happened. And what is this display? It doesn't work. Burned out, I guess. Morning, senior lieutenant. Morning. Can you bring me up to speed? You know, the major's upstairs. Better ask him. Thanks. Take the elevator. Also, a courier came to the Seminovs. But that was in the afternoon. Yeah, then two came in the evening. One was her agent, Igor. I never saw the other one before. A weird guy. Pretty squirmy. Like that, huh? Hello there? She needs treatment, not bodyguards, right, Major? However, none of the this will help here, right, doggy? Come on, doggy. Let's think what we should do with you. Hello everyone, I'm Inga Stefan, the new homicide desk consultant. Okay, I'm Darina, I mean Darina Berzana, forensic expert. And you are that FBI psychologist, right? Yes, the psychologist. And the general's niece. I guess you already know that by now. For sure. Spock has told everybody, but don't mind him. He's nosy like that. Oh, hello Inga. Hello. How did you find us? Likely through profiling. Your look today reminds me of The Lady with the Dog by Turgenev. Okay, Stephanie, bye. Thanks. Thanks for the speed. Over and out. Okay, Captain Spock, please go downstairs and find out what Terran got from the cameras. And take this with you. Let it stay at the guard's room. Yeah, but it was Chekhov, Captain Spock. Read the classics. And the dog needs water. Some genius left it in the dark without a drop of water. Would you like to be treated like that? I don't think so. Did you hear me, Captain Spock? Inga. Yes. I know what you want to tell me. But it's not the right time to sort things out. Let's do it like that. I've decided not to disturb you so early. And now we're just working deal. Thanks. So? Estimated time of death from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Looks like the cause of death is a blow to the back of her head. I'll tell you more after the autopsy. And there's blood under her nails on the right hand. And yet, was she hit on the back of her head or her face? The back of her head. Probably with a golf club. This one, I suppose? I see. It's a driver. What's up? Not much. We're trying to watch a movie, but the projectionist can't find the button. Why did you bring the dog here? Well, the Major wanted you to have it. Me? You. He wanted you to take it from under our feet. It's already a mess as is. Is that what he said? More or less. Take the dog, Smartess. Don't forget to make a copy of the video. Listen, why don't you play the KK9 cop? Here you go, and I'll deal with this. Did you calm down? Can you answer my questions? Uh, 
Yesterday, I came to pick Mara up early at 7 a.m. Mara was needed on set. I came in and she... Did you have the keys? Is the apartment yours? It just doesn't look like a woman's place. It's Mara's apartment, but I do have the keys. There's a lot of work, and Mara needs constant control. Needed. Because of her problems with alcohol? Yes. She hadn't been drinking lately. But I often spend nights here, just in case. That's why my things are here. Is the alleged murder weapon one of them? Oh, yes, the driver is from my set. A driver is. I know what a driver is. Well, tell us about yesterday. You picked Mara at the directorate, and? And I drove her back to the set. I spent a lot of time getting her to go on with the filming. Finally, I succeeded. After the shoot, she went home. She called me later. I came over and she told me about that Alexei. Who's Alexei? Alexei Talko, her friend from the past life, they were at the boarding school together. Who would have thought? A mysterious woman. Don't worry. We won't tell anyone that. Alani Kaneva. Born in 94, also known as Mara Dest. Mara Dest. Studied at the boarding school. Here, look, right at 9 p.m. That's when she got home. Last night, this Alexei was waiting for her at the door. Mara was taken aback. We never thought someone would recognize her after all these years in surgeries. This guy used to be madly in love with her. Then she left him. We started working together. And she forgot all about him. And now he popped up. I didn't believe her. Such a fool. I thought she was just stressed out. Who knew it would end up like this? Do you believe it now? Then I left. I had a date in the restaurant at 11. Did your date come? Yes, I was late, but not by much. Great. It means you have an alibi. You're free to go now. Don't leave town. If you suddenly remember something important, please give me a call. Thank you. I'd like to have a look at the apartment. Of course you can. Just don't touch anything. It's a crime scene, after all. May I? We were taught criminalistics as a part of the profiling course, Major. Really? Can you believe it? Excuse me. Were you Mara's lover? No. You asked whether we were lovers. We were at the beginning. Then we decided we'd rather be just friends and colleagues. It'd be better for her public image. I see. Да.
You weren't too tidy, Mara. Here you are. Alane Kaneva. Born in 94, I'm having a look. What are you doing? Fine, Major, sir. She's having a look. I told you not to touch anything. Let's get back to base. We have a suspect. Whatever you say, Major. The Butterfly Net. Audition scenes. I'll read this. Care to explain, Major? Explain what? You didn't call me to the crime scene either because you didn't know how to work with the profilers or because of some personal reasons. Fine, but do you realize that this woman's death is your fault? My fault? If you listen to her, or me at least, she'd be alive now. Listen, Inga. If you want to work in my unit, you must know that I decide what to do, how and why. Is that clear? I can't read lips. Inga, what do you say? What did he say to her? And this note, what's in it? I think that's a phone number and a name, so that Mara could contact him. Makes sense. As for what he said, he probably called her by her name. I mean her real name. She turned back. Judging from her reaction, she recognized him too. Why did she run away? Then, she got scared. Of course she got scared. Who knows what he had on her. Besides, she needed some advice. That's why she called Kavetsky. Kavetsky came soon after. Then he left. Taco came back, and this time Mara let him in. Stepanik, listen, find out the details about this date. Who, when, and why? Major, sir. Are you sending Michaela to the restaurant? Maybe I should go. Why? Do you think he'll get drunk? He hasn't been drinking at work for a long time. Don't worry about it. That's it. The end of the movie, Kovetsky called the ambulance and the local police, and they called us. Well, bring this Mr. Taco to the interrogation room, and you go to my office. We need to talk. I mean, our office. I got it. Hello, Major General, sir. Good day to you, too, Sergeant. At ease. You question the major suspect right at the crime scene. The witness. The witness. The driver. The murder weapon. Allegedly. Alleged murder weapon belongs to Kovetsky. And Kovetsky was a major figure in the victim's life. Besides, he's lying. What is he lying about? Well, he said that he often spent nights at Mara's. It's a lie. It's obvious he used to spend most of his time there. Besides, the apartment doesn't look like it belonged to a girl. It's a home of a successful businessman with fine taste. And the bar. Did you see the bar in the living room? I didn't think the crime scene examination was your personal. Why keep all this booze at the alcoholic's home? She quit. And she was treated with antabuse, as far as I know. There are no ex-alcoholics. Really? Yes. And he kept provoking her. A candy with cognac could kill her. Even if it's so, it's not a crime. It just shows that he's a selfish bastard. That's it. No, he's not just selfish. He's a classic example of a narcissistic dominant. He had been destroying this woman's personality for years, oppressed her, molded her to his liking. 
Kavatsky can feel people like her at an instinctive level. People like her? Malleable ones. Remember, I asked her to take off her sunglasses. So? All it took was to use the right tone. These are the basics of verbal domination. What domination? Verbal. She obviously was subjected to it for years. That's an interesting psychological insight. Inga. But, how do I put it? It doesn't bring us any closer to catching the killer. Kavetsky gains nothing from Mara's death. She was his main source of income. That's the first. Uh -huh. And second. Yeah. Oleg, I checked the love nest out. Our smartest definitely was here yesterday. I checked the reservations. There was a table for two booked for 11p. M. Anna Nina. Okay. We need to know everything about this Nina. I've already talked to her, sir. She confirmed that he was here, but he was late though. They stayed there long past midnight. Later, they called a cab. How long exactly past midnight? Exactly at 054 M. A white cab came to get them. Plate number 4308 KNU. Great job, Stephanie. Thanks. Bye. See you. You can't drink at work, can you? Mind your own business. Kavetsky has an ironclad alibi. Checkmate. Yes. Oleg, I've got the autopsy results. Great, Dasha. Thanks. The first on my way. I'll go with you. Where? To the morgue? Yes. As you wish. Thanks. Thank you. It's his car. And there he is. Poor guy is hungry. Listen here, Lieutenant. We'll come up to him and talk politely. I'll do the talking. You watch and learn. As you say, Captain, sir, I'll cover you from behind anyway. Fine. Hello there. Lyosha. Got him knit. 